Hey everyone, I'm Keisha Charmaine and I'm back and in this video I want to talk about the guilt that I have as an influencer, social media influencer. And this is like something I think about multiple times a day, you know, and it doesn't bother me that much but it, it does like poke at me. So I wanted to share with you guys and, you know, see what you guys have to say about it. And I think that maybe verbalizing it will help me get some sort of clarity and get rid of the guilt. Yeah. So basically, I became an influencer. I kind of just, it just kind of happened. I started my YouTube channel initially just posting silly videos in high school. You know, YouTube came out in 2005. I was in the ninth grade or 10th grade so we used to just you know post stupid videos <laughs> and like from the hallways in school and after school and stuff like that and then eventually I saw that YouTube was not just for stupid videos I see that people are putting tutorials on here and I was really into nail art that was my thing back in like elementary middle school and high school like nail design was my thing so I used to follow a lot of nail channels and I started making my own nail videos and then I uh, grew a bit of a following for my nail art right um when I went away to college uh I was still into nail art in college but not as much I was my freshman year of college I was transitioning from perm to natural so I had my hair in braids and I was growing out my hair so that I can um start my locks after a year of, of, after about a year I couldn't start my locks because I wanted like a year's worth of growth before I started my locks so um and during my transition process I was researching locks and you know how to cultivate them how to take care of them and I found on YouTube that a lot of people were posting their lock journeys and, you know oh here's month one here's my progress you know it's a start in the bud here's month two, here's month three, you know, things like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. People are really documenting their process. Like, like, like you can have, like, a little documentary here on YouTube. I'm like, I'm going to do the same thing. So I started documenting my YouTube channel. And um, I, my following shifted from people who were into nail art to people who were into locks. And I, I have all those videos still. So if you want to see my videos from back when my hair was this little, back when my hair was this short, you can definitely check out those videos when I was a, a little... 19 year old <laughs> so um yeah and eventually i i learned a lot about locks and then people started to ask me questions so my channel kind of shifted from just me talking about my personal journey to me giving my advice based off of my experience and my research so um yeah then my following grew you know organically over time after i graduated college I have a bachelor's degree in Africana studies and sociology so I I was doing like social work sort of jobs I was working uh like the assistant to a college counselor at high school and my old high school actually also did it at another um, location in the Bronx and I did um I worked at a homeless shelter um at the after school program work with the kids and my last job, I was a caseworker at a mental health facility. That job was really cool. I learned a lot, a lot about life, a lot, a lot about people at that job. It was a great job. And um, certain issues arose in my life. I ended up feeling like I was better off quitting that job. At that time, I had already started monetizing my platforms. So I was already getting like some money from my youtube channel i was already getting like some sponsorships here and there and um yeah so i was making chump change with my social media so now that i quit my job i'm like this is all i have right now like my youtube channel and like this is my platform that's all i have right now like finding employment adequate employment was so difficult for me so i was just like you know what let me just before I like look into you know other forms of employment let me just like take the time off from working and like just put some energy put all my energy into my social media so that's and writing my book 
and that's what I did. My book is out, More Than a Hair Journey, so you can check that out on my store or on Amazon. You can check it out. But, um, so I was writing my book and I'm, um, you know, making my, pushing out YouTube videos and trying to put out better content on my Instagram as well. And it grew a lot. I, I got reached out to by, um, influencer management company and um i i happened to know the ceos and so that was dope that i, I got into the opportunity and then I, they were able to get me some more deals and stuff and just my my social media presence grew my influence group grew you know more deals came and things like that and i felt like wow this this seems like a really good fit for me but this is not what i planned i growing up i was always the smart kid in class i graduated high school second in my in my class college was a different story i struggled in college but i i listen i first semester of college i got a 1.8 gpa last semester in college i graduated with a three six so i was able to you know get myself up like i was always like an academic girl I remember in the fourth grade, I'll never forget, Mr. Toronto, my fourth grade teacher, he was like, Keisha, you know what? You're so bright. You're so bright. You're going to be a millionaire. Watch. And I, I never forgot him saying that. And I always thought, oh, but what would I be a millionaire doing? Like, what? Um, I was always good. Like, in every subject, I was, like, pretty good. But I was never really interested in any other subject besides, like, English, language arts. So, um, like, math and science... I got it, you know, I got A's and stuff, but it didn't come to me as easily as, like, English and stuff like that. So, I've always been a writer. So that's why I'm going to, that's why I have my book out and I, I'm working on another book. But I feel like, yeah, Keisha, you're supposed to be, like, some sort of, I don't know, scholar, like, an academic. I can't even find the words. I can't even articulate myself right now. So, how... I must not be as academic as I say I am. I can't even find the words to express what I'm trying to say right now. You know, at one point I really wanted to be an educator. I wanted to be a principal, you know. I I just, I don't know, I just didn't see myself being an influencer. And I feel like that line of work is often, is often frowned upon, you know, because it's something... I mean, a lot of people do work really hard to get to where they're at, but for other influencers, you know, they just happen to be drop dead gorgeous, and um, their content isn't even all of that gr the best quality. But they have like, you know, the greatest amounts of deals and stuff like that, and they're making tons of money because they're really pretty. You know, people, you know, they don't really have respect for influencers for that reason. And not that I'm, you know, too concerned about, you know, what people see as respected careers, but I personally just had different expectations of myself. And I don't like that feeling. Um, so I've been, you know, thinking about going back to school. I have always, you know, told myself, I, you know, I want a PhD because my mom has a master's degree. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you know, when your parents work hard and struggle to, you know, do what they do i feel like you know they push you in a, in a better position so you should have like a better outcome if that makes sense so you know so i feel like you know what my mom has a master's i should get a phd so i'm i'm thinking about you know going back to school soon and getting my master's degree and then i'll take it from there um i'm not positive exactly what sort of career i would you know want to undertake so I'm not positive as to what I would study yet. Um, I have an idea. I won't speak on that. Um, I think I have mentioned it in my live video. Really briefly, I mentioned it in my last live. If and when I get back into like the 9 to 5 kind of... Not even necessarily 9 to 5, but just like a being an employee. If, I, if and when I get back into that, I still would want to keep doing, you know, the YouTube, Instagram sort of thing. I'm not 100% sure if I would keep up my shop. Um, I I get great feedback on my oils, my natural hair oils, my hair growth oils, I should say. 
and I get really great feedback on my jewelry and the head wrap but um so I'm not sure if I would keep up with with that the shop I probably should like you know they say you know multiple streams of income or that's how you how millionaires become millionaires usually and Mr. Toronto said I was gonna be a millionaire so I gotta keep up uh, my streams of income right so yeah that's kind of where I'm at um playing with the idea of not really playing with the idea. I'm really con seriously considering going back to school, finally. I'm 27, you know, I guess now is probably the best time. I'm not married, I don't have kids. It's probably best for me to get it out the way, get my education out the way as soon as possible. If you're wondering, oh, why don't you just skip the school part and just go and just find a, a regular job? The reason why I'm not trying to pursue any more employment with the education that I have is because my, my degree is in African Studies and Sociology. It's very limiting to the social work sort of field social work or education and um those are fields i don't want to be in that's what i've learned working in those fields i learned i don't want to be in it i have tons of reasons why i don't want to do education or social work anymore tons of reasons i'm not going to get them get into those reasons in this video because i don't want this to turn into that type of rant um <laughs> Because I know, I know where that video would end up leading to. But that's pretty much it. I just wanted to get that out of my chest, I guess. And, like, um, hear what you guys have to say. I don't know what to expect from you guys to say. I think you guys would probably would just give me some support. Like, yeah, you should go back to school. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to, you know, further the education, you know. Well, there are those people, you know. And I understand who, you know, are completely against formal education. Because it's kind of like a, a scam as far as, you know, how much money you have to spend and the loans and the, this and that and this and that um well i know for sure if i can't pay it out of pocket i'm not doing it and that's my intention to pay for my masters out of pocket yeah so i i guess i'll leave with a question just in case you guys don't have anything to say about my particular situation do you do you ever feel like you're not meeting your expectations like the expectations that you set for yourself and what do you do about that? Do you just change your expectations? Do you lower your standards? And it's not even necessarily lowering your standards. It might just be shifting them. And I think that I may have to keep that in mind. It's not just because I'm not, you know, in academia doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, fulfilling my potential. I think that I'm still serving a purpose, serving my purpose in some shape or form you know spreading the acknowledgement and love of the beauty of black women and black women's natural hair and locks in particular and yeah i think i think that's it <sighs> thanks for watching love light and locks